you missed the tour this this year despite showing good form before it um was that very frustrating at the time it wasn't it wasn't because i always again it's the philosophical attitude that i know i know there's always a plan and like i don't i've also always said that i don't want to go to the tour de france just to ride the tour de france <clears throat> i'd like to i would have been going to the tour this year to try and help the guys ride gc and like with the way the first week panned out with all the crashes and stuff i was kind of kind of happy not to be there in the end and, and i mean it's obviously i'm going to ride the tour one day and whether it's going to be next year or the year after like we haven't decided yet but it's nice to be able to go to races and, and thinking of getting results and with the way the uh w w watching the tour this year and watching the guys in the team time draw and all that and i mean i think jonathan's his uh his choice was validated when they were guys won the team time trial and that was massive for Garmin and yeah for us to win that it, it was although it was really hard for me to watch the guys on the podium celebrating it was like to be a part of that of, of the team and see that happen it was uh yeah I, I was I was definitely had a smile on my face at home you've I mean obviously shown well in the shorter stage race in the past winning Poland last year you were second there this year you were third in Catalonia but taking 13th in the Vuelta is is a step up so now, do you see yourself as, as somebody that's going to aim for GC in, in the Grand Tours in the future? Is that the, the future career path? I think, for, for me, the uh, it's, I'm a few years off riding GC at Grand Tour still, I think. And it's also important to have a, have a Grand Tour route that's, that suits most characteristics. And like, there's a lot of, like next year there's a lot of time trials in the Grand Tours, so it, and it's, that's not so good for me. So, yeah, maybe we'll, uh, I, I haven't, I don't really think about the future too much and set ambitions. It's more a case of I just go into every race and try and do my best. And uh, but yeah, I mean, it's the, the Wells this year definitely proved that I can race well over three weeks, and and that is something that we're able to build on year on year. And hopefully, I'll get stronger and continue to get stronger and continue to improve. And then we'll be looking at a, at a strong, strong results in the future. And yeah, I think the podium of the Grand Tour is definitely within reach when you consider. Uh, yeah, how how I, how I was on the climbs at the Walter this year, and and how close the racing is getting there as well. I mean, a race with a race with uh, like the Walter with time bonuses, someone like I can make a big difference with that in my sprint. You missed the Giro this year because of allergies. It was partly the reason. So, do you think you'll follow the similar program next season? And if so, is the tour? I mean, given the tour route, you mentioned that there isn't a whole lot of climbing, but is that still a big target for next season? I think I'm just going to take it race by race and get, I haven't really thought about next year. I've only just finished this year at the moment. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go into the season next year and analyse the, the parkours of the free Grand Tours. And obviously the Giro is not really too favourable with, with my allergy situation. And I'm never going to, like, even with any amount of allergy treatments in April, May, I don't think I'm going to ever going to be at, as good as I could be in July, August, September. So that's also something I have to think about. And it's, it's a pity because the Giro maybe suits me the best of the, of the free Grand Tours. But, yeah, we'll look at the... the the free Grand Tour routes and we'll uh, and see which suits me better and, and see what the team objectives are as well. I mean, it's, it, we've got a completely different roster for next year and it's uh, the team's evolving year on year and we can uh, yeah, go into it with real focus on, on certain objectives and hopefully I'll be a part of, the, part of that next year, but yeah, we'll see. You've taken a lot of wins over the, over the years and you're a rider who, when you have the good day, you seem to be able to make the most of it and to seize the opportunity. And Jonathan Veras has said that he sees you as a, as a winner, like, you know, in terms of mentality, that you've a way of doing that. Um, your first cousin, Nicholas Roach, had frustrations in recent years that he was always there or thereabouts, but just to finally turn it around was, was proving difficult, but he did so in the Tour of Beijing. So how important do you think that's been for his mentality? I think that it's funny actually because we were talking about it at the World Championships that I, I knew he just needed one win just to, and it makes such a big difference to, to break that duck and to break, just to have that confidence as well and it's that's, that's something that I definitely benefited from coming from like I stayed amateur an extra year to, to continue that winning mentality and to learn how to win races and in my last year amateur I won seven or eight, eight races and, that, and then just I was managed I was able to continue winning immediately in the pros and to keep that mentality was really really important I think and but to yeah to wake up in the after that, I think I was racing when they won the stage in Beijing, and when Nico won the stage in Beijing, and to see the results with him, him winning and Philip in second, it was kind of in, a, yeah, <laughs> kind of a bit of dis disbelief. But like, yeah, I was incredibly happy for him because it's just it's great for our starting to have uh, that three of us back back up with the well, four pro tour riders and, and the three guys with pro tour points, and it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully he can continue. Uh, that'll give him a bit, of, a real big boost for next year, and he can, uh, he can, 
yeah, knock on and, and, and win, some, win some races in Europe. It happened before with Kelly and Roach in the past, and you see it to some extent uh, with, with the new generation, that when one wins, or when one does a really good performance, another does. Is that a, a slight, I don't know if rivalry is the right word, but is there is there incentive when you see someone that, that you know very well doing well that you want to do the same, or is it a, is it a self-belief thing that you say, well, they do it, I can do it, or, or how? It's exactly that, it's the self-belief, it's the... It is a case of if they can win, why can't I? And it's and it's also respecting the peloton. I think Ireland is really becoming a cycling nation now, and it's it's getting really exciting to have to have us all on the uh, on the world stage and, and winning races. And it does it does build confidence and, and support as well. I mean, in the final Lombardia last week, like me and Nicholas were both there and both feeling pretty like although he wasn't feeling as good as me, like and it's having that little bit of support there. I mean, it's obviously extra special with me and Nicholas Nicholas because we're, we're family and. He actually gave me a real like, come on, you can do this today, and it, and it, that little bit of encouragement and that real, it, it just, it was just when I needed it, and it was, it was incredible and to have that little bit of a, yeah, yeah, I can actually do this, and it's, yeah, just to have that little bit of support, and it, it's nice in the peloton to have that, and we can, yeah, we were talk, all three of us talking at the back at the start on, on Lombardia, and it, yeah, it was, uh, we all get on really well. And I think that helps, and it's really going to build confidence for the, for the world, future world championships. I think suit. Like to have that team environment between I mean, us and for the Olympics next year, it's uh, I think we can really pull for each other and hopefully get a really big result for Ireland. The strong end of season with uh, Philip and Nicholas on that Beijing stage, and then yourself in various races, Welt included, and also uh, Giro de Lombardia, means that Ireland will. Uh, it's been said we'll have four places in next year's Olympic Games. So is riding? I mean, the course may not be absolutely ideal, but is riding London is that a big big goal for you? Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, to, to represent the country in the Olympics and, and also one of the biggest, uh, I think we're going to be the biggest team within the Irish Olympic so, Olympic team. So, yeah, cycling's really uh, big, coming on leaps and bounds in, in the country. And, uh, yeah, I think the course does suit us. I think it's going to be a really hard race and it's, it's going to be a very open race. And me and Nicholas are both quite, both quite fast from a group. So, uh, I think anything's possible at, that race, at, at the Olympics in London. And although it is a long way from the, from the final climb to the finish, it's going to be it's going to be so hard, such a hard race. I don't think there's going to be many finishes. I mean, it's going to be very, it's, it's going to be it's going to be full gas from because with the sprinters, there's going to be this, yes, the sprinters going, but there'll be another. There's so many guys who want to don't want to take to the sprinters to the finish. So I think mean, it's going to be very difficult for it to come down to a sprint and uh, a small group is yeah very possible coming into London and yeah just to be a part of that would be uh, to be on the start line would be really. Oh, my dad went to two Olympics as well, so it's it's definitely something that every like you can be you can be world champion, but being an Olympic champion is a completely different thing to to normal people, and that's yeah that 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 would be definitely a dream. You mentioned your dad, Neil Martin. He's actually been looking after the Irish team in some races this year, so he's got an input obviously into the next generation that's coming through. Yeah, I think that's really good for the for, for the country as well. It's, like he's seen a lot of the, uh, he's got a lot of experience, obviously, from watching me go through from juniors to, to the professional ranks, and he knows what it takes as far as for himself, and, and then even in the modern generation, seeing what I've been, I do, and obviously I give him a bit of an insight and onto training techniques and, and diet and stuff like that, and that can really help the help the guys come through as well. And we got some really talented kids in in Ireland now, and, it, and it's it's exciting for the future. I mean, I met a lot of them at the, a few of them at the World Championships, and we got to talk, talk to them there, and. They put on a strong performance, although we didn't really come away with, with the results we wanted. I think the ambition and I think what you were talking about, us breeding confidence among us, it also breeds confidence for them because the, those guys can see us and see that we're not, we're, we're human, we're only, we're just guys, we're not this subterrestrial, extra, extraterrestrial thing on the TV that that's, that's impossible to get to. It's a very realistic thing but to become, for Irish riders to become professional now and we ride the, ride the national championships with them and they're, they're, we don't just ride away from them you know it's like a so it's it's really exciting for the it's i think it's good for those guys to meet us and ride race with us and and hopefully we can have even more irish riders in the in the future because i think the way we're going we might end up being the next luxembourg and have nine places in the world championships and we need some guys to fill that finishing up we've talked a lot about bikes but it's now the off season so you've you've got time not to think about it so what do you do away from cycling to to kind of chill out yeah i'm gonna completely forget my bike now it's gonna be <laughs> Yeah, that's, I'm not going to look at it for a few weeks and just really switch off and it's just to do all the things I mean the last few months have been chaotic I haven't I've spent maybe 25 days at home since July I think so it's just to relax and be at home and just meet friends and, and see people I haven't seen for a while and uh, 
yeah, I'm, I'm doing a bit of travelling as well. I'm going to South Africa for a couple of weeks, and that's going to be really exciting. And and uh, yeah, go to my friend's wedding, and yeah, it's uh, then it's, I'm sure it's going to go as quick as this year's has gone as well, and I'll be back to training again as, as soon as uh, yeah, very soon, too soon. But no, no, it's it's been a really great year, and to, to finish to finish with the way I did, it's nice to go into the season like that, and I can really really enjoy this and, uh, and do more of this coffee drink coffee drinking. It's really intense season. I mean, you're, you're talking about probably nine or ten months where you're you're on the road, you're racing or, or a training camp. So riders have maybe four or five weeks or whatever it is to to relax. Is that enough? I mean, do you, do you find at the end of that time that you're ready to get back on the bike, or do you always wish there's a bit longer? It's just the thing is, well, when you start training, you do get to stay at home as well. And we're we're quite lucky with our team that we don't have a training camp as such in December. With a, they, let, they allow us to just really switch off for the year and just. Uh, and then get back into it in, in, in January. So, but uh, I think by the time yeah, by the time I've I've had four or five weeks when I'm not training and stuff, I really I, I really enjoy riding my bike. And and for me as well, winter training generally consists of a lot of gym work and just riding my bike with friends and just enjoying riding my bike. No efforts, no intervals. Just I think I'm quite fortunate in the fact that I don't need to do much off season training and I still t- seem to come back into the season with, with good form. So. I mean that that's why I can like race until the end of the year as well because I don't need to train much in the off season. <laughs> I just I like racing. I don't like training. And it's, no, that's it's true that the off season is getting shorter and shorter in cycling now. And I look on cycling, I like news all over the nation, and there's there's more and more results coming from all, all the time. And it's it's, it's strange to be the end of October and Japan Cup obviously and Tour de Hainan and there's, there's races going on 12 months a year and it's uh, it shows the globalisation of the sport, but. Also, for uh, I think we do need to, and our team just seem to recognise that we we uh, we need some a bit of time off as well. And you can't just we're not robots. Finally, do you have any idea what what your initial schedule is like for next year, or is that still a long way away? Uh, I haven't really thought about it yet. I saw I saw Met Allen the other day, Alan Piper, for the first time, and he says, oh, "What do you want to start with next year?" And I said, "Wow, <laughs> I haven't even just I haven't even literally haven't even considered my first race yet." So. Yeah, I definitely need to sit down with them and, and, and start planning and making a plan, but uh, I don't think it'd be much different to previous years. I, like, it's purely doing races that I really... I'm lucky enough to be able to choose races that I really enjoy doing, like Catalonia and, and, and Pace Vasco, then Ardennes. I mean, that, that'd be the basics to the start of the year, and then, then after that, I mean, we'll make... We'll see what the calendar holds and see what, uh, see what races we're actually doing next year as a squad. But, yeah, I mean, again, I mean, it's not... It's, yeah, I'd say it's just keeping it fun and just and uh, I'm lucky enough to yeah, be able to choose my program and yeah.